Well, it's wonderful to be here with you all today, and I want to ask you a simple question. Have you ever been to the home of Nelson Mandela? I have. In 2008, I had the privilege of traveling to South Africa with a range of people from all over the world, people from every, uh, every nation and every corner of the globe. As I went there, we were able to visit the home of the quite amazing and inspirational Nelson Mandela, and we also met some of the heroes of the civil rights movement right across Africa. See, I started on a journey of trying to live a life of impact, things that mattered to me, things that had inspired me, things that had stirred my mind and my heart and caused me to think differently and try and, most importantly, act and live differently. With that group, a small team of us were then invited to go and visit the amazing nation of Swaziland. Swaziland is an incredible place. It's beautiful. Uh, it has rolling green hills, and it has the amazing large red African sun that sets every night over the flat top trees. Uh, it has amazing people with generous hospitality and big laughs and bigger hearts. It also has some more sobering things that it's unfortunately infamous for. And Swaziland is a nation that's been declared a national emergency state because of HIV. And in Swaziland right now, one in four adults carries that infection. And so in that context, in this amazing place of, of a people and a community and a nation of both huge promise and, and great pain, I met Rose. Rose was an amazing lady. I one day was taken into uh, her village, jumped in a four-wheel drive, drove down the tarmac road and kept going for what seemed like an eternity. And then we went off the bitumen tarmac road and went onto the dirt road and we kept going and started to wind up a large mountain and we kept going and kept driving. And then the dirt road ended and we were ended up driving over gravel, really just not much more than a simple walking path. We kept driving and we kept driving and we kept driving until eventually the four-wheel drive couldn't go any further and so we were asked to get out of the car and we continued to walk on foot and wind up and up and up the mountain. On the top of the mountain, I met a woman who has uh, really changed and reframed the way I've thought about impact and the way I've thought about innovation. And the way I've understood that both of those two things act really powerfully and amazingly together because innovation at its simplest, I've been asked a lot um, in my work, I've worked as uh, an innovation consultant, I've worked as the social entrepreneur in residence to a global design agency, I've had the privilege of advising and working alongside the global uh, chief innovation officer, working with places like World Vision International and the United Nations. Uh, I've had the, uh, the privilege of serving as a judge and a mentor on global innovation challenges. The last one, just last year, run right out of here, South Australia, and reaching around the world, had over 700 teams apply from 70 nations around the world. But in all of that, I've been asked a lot, well, what, what is innovation? This word gets used a lot. What, what is it actually? And for me, the best definition I've ever heard is really simple. Innovation is simply finding a new and better way than what already exists. A new and better way. And Rose taught me a new and better way. When we got to the top of the mountain, I sat down and there she was, big smile, amazing woman, and we began to learn about her story and we began to learn about a fairly common story in her community. Rose was a, a mum, she had children, uh, she was also running a small business and seeking to create a life for herself and her family and the people she cared about, um, but it was very, very difficult. And quite a few people like Rose were struggling to be able to send their children to school and, and to be able to afford the education and, and the things that were around that. They also struggled around some simple things like provision and access to nutritious, healthy food and access to opportunities to create a livelihood and have genuine economic empowerment and, 
an agency for their own lives. And what was happening a lot in their community was uh, quite a few large charities were working with them, and those charities were providing things like the schooling and the food. And But Rose wasn't satisfied with just living a life where charity was the the foundation that enabled her and her children and her family to live. And so Rose began to create a different way. I met Rose because I was there to tour and to view a community bank that she'd set up. And in their community in Swaziland, they didn't have normal banking. Uh, they didn't have the infrastructure that we take for granted. They didn't have branches. They didn't have buildings. They often didn't have electricity and, and the kind of access to computing technology. And, and yet Rose had done something really, really amazing, and she created a community bank. She'd found a way. She'd found a new and better way to bring an impact. And Rose taught me three things that I want to share with you today. Those three things, really since 2008 in my life, have been the three things that, that I follow as I seek to continue to walk out and live this life of innovation for impact. And the first thing that Rose taught me is that you need to find and meet a need. Meet a need. You know, so many people in the innovation world look in and so many of us who see the kind of stuff that happens in startups and technology and the amazing things that are happening around our world, we read the news, we, we scroll through our phones, we, we have a look at the stories of people who have made a difference, and, and we can be mistaken and forgiven for thinking that innovation and succeeding in innovation is all about finding your great next idea. And if I only found a great idea, if I only found that one idea that was going to change the way things worked, it would, it would pivot me, it would, it would uh, take me to great success, it would enable me to break through and, and do the things I wanted to do. And so people try and find that one idea, or they see people talk about their great idea. And yet falling in love or trying to find the idea isn't the secret to innovation. The secret to innovation is finding a problem. It's finding a need that you care about, that drives you, that you're passionate about, and then not just finding that need, not just uh, being aware of that need, but then choosing to act, to do something about it. For Rose, what drove her was the fact that she wanted to have a sense of confidence and a sense of pride and an ability to be able to provide for her children, her family, and she wanted that for her friends, and she wanted that for others, and she didn't just want to be someone who sat and, and asked for handouts, she wanted to be someone who created a future for herself and for the people she cared about. That was the problem, that was the need that was driving her. And then she didn't just see the need, she didn't just deeply understand the need, she chose to do something about it. And this is what I love about that community bank that I saw that day. It wasn't fancy, it wasn't slick, it was very basic, it was incredibly simple. It was using the tools they did have access to, to hack a way, to find a way to do something really meaningful. They began to actually pool their resources, and on her own, Rose was, was creating a small micro-business and, 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 and making things and selling them to people around who might want them, and, and on, on her own, she wasn't able to break through just with that. As hard as she worked from the time she got up to the time she fell asleep, exhausted at the end of the day, and yet for her, she wanted to do one thing about it, and so creating a banking system where the small, small amounts of surplus could be tallied and counted and pulled with others and gathered and over time create revenue and create capacity and opportunity to do something slightly bigger and then slightly bigger and then slightly bigger. And that community bank model was the first of its kind in that region that was amazing. And it was because Rose, she saw a need, she was deeply connected to it and she did something about it. That's what we can do. I mean, our world, you don't have to look too far to find needs all around us. 
You don't even have to be as grand as looking at the big environmental climate challenges of our day. You don't have to be as grand as looking at some of the social and community challenges in our own cities and and the suburbs we live in and maybe lots of us experience in our own lives and families and circles. You don't have to look as grand and as far as understanding the big economic needs and what's going on around, around us. You can just look somewhere see something, it's not that hard. But the secret is then choosing to do something about it. And again, please don't fall for this second mistake. Don't fall for thinking that you have to do the best thing, the perfect thing, the right thing. Often it's choosing to do something. And just starting to move and starting to act can be a powerful catalyst for momentum. Uh, The book... The Art of War has an amazing phrase that's really stuck with me, and it simply says, opportunities are multiplied when you seize the first one. Do something. It doesn't have to be the great thing, the perfect thing, the best thing. Let it be your thing. That responds to a need and meets a need, and all of a sudden, you can start the journey of innovation for impact. The second thing that Rose taught me was once you've begun to meet a need... It's time for you to form a team. The great thing about Rose is she wasn't doing it alone. She she wasn't trying to just have her idea and forge ahead and just do her thing. And as she was talking to people about the problem she experienced, she realized that there were other people experiencing or connected to or passionate about the same need. And the more she sought to listen and learn about that need and that problem being experienced by other people the more she was actually connected to some other people who cared about that need. And so Rose didn't go off and do a community bank by herself. Rose partnered up with some others and collaborated, and they began to pool a little bit of their energy and began to find other people who might have some other ways of acting and moving. And again, there's a great saying. It says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with others. Form your team. Once you've found a need that you care about, once you've chosen to just do something about that need, talk to others. Listen, ask questions, learn, discover, be curious about what others are experiencing and what others see in that area of need. And and as you do, you're going to find more and more other people who care about it like you do. And form a team. Forming a team is a powerful thing. It can also be a frustrating thing. I mean, it means that always your ideas aren't the ones that necessarily get adopted. It, it might mean that there's compromise needed. It might mean you have to negotiate and exchange back and forward a little bit. Sometimes it's easier to just want to charge off and do your thing. And if you want to go fast for a while, you can do that. But you won't go far. A form a team. What Rose did with her team is, as other ladies in her community began to gather and form this collective community bank, and as they began to pull their little bit of resource and their small amount of resource together, they began to uh, find something really, really powerful. They then collaborated with a group called the Vision Fund, and the Vision Fund opened them up to connect with other people who were doing some similar things in other communities. It was really amazing. And Rose discovered that she went... into the power of multiplication, into the the power of collaboration and doing something far more than what she could just do alone. Meet a need, form a team, and then thirdly, Rose taught me that it's really powerful to find your tribe. I'm not talking about literal, but for Rose, she was connected to this community bank, this collaborative Then she was connected to the Vision Fund globally. What that did is they connected her not just to new markets and new people who might want to buy their products, but it connected her to other people in other parts of Swaziland that really were passionate about this need that she saw and she was doing something about. Then connected her to other people across Africa and other people around the world. Ended up with our group, people from around the globe and this bloke from Australia who had heard about what Rose was doing 
and who wanted to jump in a four-wheel drive and drive and hike and walk up a mountain to see for myself. Because Rose was connected to a global movement. And guys, this is so powerful. You know, often when we're doing things in, in even a small team or we're trying to get an innovation off the ground, if you speak to, speak to people in the world of startups like I do, I have the privilege of leading Startup Adelaide, which is the peak body for people running innovation companies and just having a go and beginning something new and creating a new startup company. But often people, when they're doing that, they can be slugging away in ones and twos and threes and smaller teams, and we all hit hard times. As an innovator, when you're seeking a new and better way, it's going to be hard. It's going to be times where you're going to be tested and challenged. It's going to be difficult. You're going to hit times where your motivation is low, where your sense of strength and energy is low, where your sense of optimism for what you want to do is low. And in those times, being connected to a broader tribe, finding your tribe, that becomes a movement of energy that can sustain you is really powerful. In San Francisco, Silicon Valley, there's, there's a culture, there's a saying that if you want to go and be part of the innovation tribe in Silicon Valley, you have to choose to understand that you have to give before you get. And you can get plugged in to that tribe and you can get plugged in to that movement of people who help you and give you advice and encouragement and support. But you don't go first to try and get from that tribe. You first go with an attitude of radical generosity, even if you're starting small, to say, hey, I'm here. I'd like to connect. I'd like to plug in. I'm here. What can I do? How can I give? How can I support? And that exchange of energy is a powerful force. And in innovation and startup land, it's a powerful force to plug into that. Now, there is a global tribe happening right now, a global movement of innovation for impact. In Toronto, some of my collaborators are running a thing called the Mars Discovery District, and they are totally changing the way that innovation across North America is conceptualized. They've taken companies who've tried to do new technology work and and they've actually turned that into a force for good, helping society. It's been amazing. You know, JP Morgan, the investment company, actually predicts that very, very soon, that innovation for impact, so startups or companies wanting to use their profit for purpose, is going to turn into a $10 trillion market every year, making it one of the largest places to invest, one of the greatest opportunities around the world. $10 trillion. You know, Deloitte did a survey just recently of over a 1,000 companies around the world and discovered that if a company right now, whether it's small, starting up, or large, if it actually doesn't have a clear social or environmental purpose, then it's not going to exist in 10 years' time. Think about all the success stories we hear. If they're not actually a force for good in our world, they're not going to be supported. This exchange is happening around the world. This movement, this tribe is a powerful one. And the great thing is, guys, you can reach out and do it from your desktop, from your laptop, from your phone here. You can begin to look up things like the B Corporation movement, the social capital movement. You can look up things and just seek innovation for impact. And there are communities that would love to hear from you. One of them exists right here in Adelaide. And one of them is this TEDx movement. You're in this room right now, and a crowd can turn into a tribe if you connect around these things. But Startup Adelaide is an amazing movement. It's a tribe happening in our city. And I'm really inspired by these people. And there are some amazing people disrupting and reframing using innovation for good in new ways that are really inspiring. I'm learning about teams that are reframing education. Uh, there's a team right now in Adelaide who are uh, identifying and finding potential student leaders in schools and regions that, that get overlooked by everybody else. And they're finding a new way through their innovation to resource and support these amazing student leaders. There are teams right now that are reframing human impact. Uh, groups that have come from Europe and are basing now in here and are looking for people to help them. And they're reframing a new app that's going to be helping and connecting the parents and caregivers of children with a disability 
to help break through the isolation barrier in their lives. There are people right here, teams, that are reframing farming. And farmers in our community do it tough sometimes. And, and these people are actually taking satellites and aerospace, and they're using that technology to get it in the hands of farmers with simple little tools and helping these farmers predict rainfall and be able to respond in powerful ways. And these are the teams that are part of a tribe that are changing the world. Rose is an amazing lady. But my suspicion is if you're watching this, if you're here, that there's a seed in you that's pretty amazing too. We can all find a need that we care about. We all know that we need to find new and better ways in our communities, in our cities, in our world. Anyone here can form a team and you can all find your tribe. And I'll finish with this. We're in a unique moment in human history. Like never before, there are things happening in our lives and our world that humanity has never seen. And in that regard, you and I are stewards of this moment. What are you going to do with it? Innovators, what are you going to do? People passionate about a problem or a need, what's your choice going to be? Don't worry about doing the best thing, the coolest thing. What's your thing? This moment is an opportunity, and you can start today. Thank you.